Imagine a meteor slamming into the Earth today. By the time the dust settles, 7.9 billion people are dead. Only about a hundredth of 1% survive. A population so small, they could all fit into a single small town. That nightmare never happened. And yet, in our deep past, something with the same effect did. Around 900,000 years ago, the human record thins to almost nothing. Archaeological sites go quiet. No footprints, bones, tools, nothing. For more than 100,000 years, it looks as if we simply disappeared from the surface of the Earth. And for decades, no one knew what to make of this silence. Maybe it was an illusion of preservation. Maybe we just hadn't dug in the right places. But in 2023, a team of geneticists pulled a different answer out of our own DNA. By studying the genomes of more than 3,000 modern people using a new model called FitCol, short for Fast Infinitesimal Time Coalescent Process, they reconstructed the size of ancient populations in time. And the results shook them. At some point, between 930,000 and 813,000 years ago, our ancestors were reduced to a global breeding population of roughly 1,280 individuals. That's about one person for an area, the surface of Connecticut. One person per 15,000 square kilometers. Even today, Mongolia, the emptiest country on Earth, is 30 times denser at two people per square kilometer. And the collapse was anything but quick. For 117,000 years, generation after generation, humanity existed in numbers so low that extinction wasn't just possible, it was likely. Genetic diversity shrank by 99%, leaving a lineage that would be forever marked by that near death. That may be why the fossil record falls so silent. With so few of us left, there were almost no bones to leave behind. Just a long, uneasy quiet, a species balanced on the edge of erasure. Literally, anything could have wiped us out of existence. And yet, somehow, we endured. A handful of families scattered across ancient landscapes, carrying forward a fragile spark of humanity that could easily have gone out. The question is not whether the bottleneck happened. It's who and what made it through. And as it turns out, the answer is much more complicated and far more interesting than anyone thought. The numbers tell us humanity shrank to the size of a village. But numbers don't kill. Something in the world around our ancestors did. Around 900,000 years ago, the planet entered one of its most brutal transitions, the mid-Pleistocene transition. For millions of years before, ice ages had come and gone in steady cycles of about 41,000 years. Glaciers advanced, then retreated, thin sheets breathing in and out. But during this transition, the rhythm changed. The cycles stretched to 100,000 years, and the ice grew thicker, harsher, more destructive. Paleoclimate reconstructions published by Clark in a Quaternary Science Reviews of 2006 traced this shift to a long-term cooling and drying of global environments. At the heart of it, around 0.9 million years ago, came the coldest, driest plunge of all, what geologists call the 0.9 million years ago event. Across Africa and Eurasia, grasslands withered, forests collapsed, and rivers dwindled. Large herbivores that hominins depended on for hunting were forced into desperate dietary shifts, a change captured in isotope studies of fossil teeth analyzed by Jordans and Quaternary International in 2010. When the animals faltered, humans faltered with them, and our ancestors weren't ready. Because there is something else missing from this time. Fire. Some of the earliest traces of hominin fire use exist. Burned bones at Swartkrans Cave, South Africa, reported by Brain and Sillen in Journal of Human Evolution in 1988, dating to nearly one million years ago. Even earlier, reddened sediments and stone tools at Kubifora, Kenya, described by James Harris and Richard Potts the same year, potentially from campfires a million and a half years old. But those traces are debated, and they are rare. More convincing evidence comes much later. At Gesher Banot Yaakov in Israel, Namagor and Inbar and colleagues reported in 2004 clear signs of repeated burning. Flint micro-artifacts, charred seeds, even wood ash. Dated to about 780,000 years ago. That's after the bottleneck had already begun. And in a PNAS review of 2011, Will Robrooks and Paola Villa concluded that consistent habitual fire use didn't really appear until 400 to 300,000 years ago at sites like Beach's Pit in England and Kesem Cave in Israel. 
which means that during the most unforgiving stretch of the mid-Pleistocene transition, our ancestors were almost certainly without reliable fire. No warmth against cold nights. No cooking to release nutrients. No protection in the dark. Survival in an altered world, with fewer animals and shrinking water, would have been punishing enough. Without fire, it was lethal. The result was not a single catastrophe, but a drawn-out suffocation. Populations were squeezed into ever smaller refuges, cut off from one another, watching their numbers dwindle across 117,000 years. Some researchers, like Hai Peng Li and colleagues in their 2023 science study, suggest migration worsened the toll. As Africa dried, hominins were pushed out toward Eurasia, using new land bridges opened by glacial lows. But those journeys mostly failed. Harsh landscapes offered no refuge, and most groups simply disappeared. The fossil record reflects this emptiness. From 950,000 to 650,000 years ago, sites that once teemed with tools and bones fall silent. Almost no hearths, almost no skeletons. Just absence, continent after continent. We don't know whether it was the cold, the drought, the hunger, or the failed migrations that pressed us so low. The likely answer is all of them. Together, they formed a trap that drove our ancestors into numbers, so small. Extinction seemed inevitable. And for most species, that would have been the end. But not for us. Somehow, even without fire or certainty, a few hundred families clung on, carrying forward a fragile spark that would one day ignite into everything we now call human. And in that silence lies another mystery. If so many vanished, then who, exactly, managed to endure? And what did survival turn them into? The genome tells us the numbers. The Earth leaves us silence. Between 950,000 and 650,000 years ago, the fossil record nearly disappears. A few jaws in Spain, fragments in Africa, cranial scraps in Asia. Not enough to draw faces, not enough to give names. For 100,000 years, humanity's ancestors hover like ghosts, present but invisible. Two possibilities have emerged from this quiet. One points to Homo erectus, the most enduring human ancestor of its time, Erectus had already spread across Africa, Asia, and Europe. It survived nearly two million years in total, leaving bones from Dimanisi in Georgia to Ngandong in Java. Some researchers argue the approximately 1,280 survivors identified in the 2023 science study may simply have been Erectus bands, toughing it out through the mid-Pleistocene transition. The fragments we do have, like those studied by C.K. Brain in South Africa, and later by Anton, in his 2003 study published in Evolutionary Anthropology, suggest regional survival pockets rather than a single global population. The other points to something new, Homo heidelbergensis, first described by Otto Schuttensack in 1908 from a jaw found in Germany. Heidelbergensis is widely considered the common ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and ourselves. Some paleoanthropologists, including Giorgio Manzi, have argued that Heidelbergensis emerged out of the bottleneck itself, that the population crash acted as an evolutionary crucible, filtering and reshaping survivors into a distinct lineage. The mechanism is familiar in biology. When populations collapse, genetic diversity contracts. Harmful traits can fix, but so can unique combinations that differentiate survivors from their ancestors. In 2015, Paul Coppolo showed in PLOS Genetics how this doomed woolly mammoths on Wrangell Island a bottlenecked group of a few hundred developed mutations for brittle bones, poor fertility, even loss of smell, and collapsed within millennia. Bottlenecks mostly erase. But sometimes, they also remake. For us, the outcome was different. Instead of degeneration, the bottleneck may have given rise to the lineage that produced all later humans. The handful of survivors, whether Hardy erectus or early Heidelbergensis, carried forward a narrowed genetic line that would eventually branch into Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens. This is why the fossil gap is so haunting. The silence may not just mark near extinction. It may mark the birth of us. We don't know for certain who they were. The bones are too few. The genetics too faint. But we do know this. Almost every other branch failed. Only this shadow lineage endured. And from that endurance, a new kind of human emerged. And it's not just slight changes, like new skills, 
new tool set, or anything like this. The survivors that made it out might just be of an entirely new species. First of all, the silence is real. The genetic signal is sharp. But what it means, that is where the debate begins. The 2023 science study painted the starkest picture. A breeding population reduced to just approximately 1,280 individuals, persisting for more than 117,000 years. For them, the culprit was clear. The climate shift of the mid-Pleistocene transition with its longer ice ages and deeper droughts. The 0 0.9 million year event, the coldest point of the transition, looked like a natural executioner. But not everyone agrees. Almost as soon as the study was published, critics pointed out that the bottleneck appears strongest in African lineages, but not always in non-Africans. That raised alarms. Could this be an artifact of the model? In late 2023, a paper posted by Rogers and Harris suggested exactly that. The fit coal method may exaggerate long bottlenecks when applied to complex demographic histories. In their words, the 900,000-year signal could be a statistical mirage. Others don't deny the crash, but question the trigger. Climate alone, they argue, might not explain why hominins suffered, while many other mammals did not. Some anthropologists propose that failed migrations were the real filter. As Africa dried into savanna and deserts expanded, early humans were pushed outward. Land bridges opened as seas fell, but the paths led into Eurasian landscapes just as hostile. Most bands likely starved or perished on the journey, leaving only a few refugees to sustain the line. And still others suggest the bottleneck may have been the crucible for a new species. Giorgio Manzi and colleagues noted in 2011 in Quaternary International that fossils after 800,000 years begin to show larger brain cases and heavier brows. Transitional forms toward Homo heidelbergensis. In this view, the bottleneck wasn't just a near death. It was an evolutionary shift. The disagreements pile up. Was it climate, migration, technology, or all of the above? Was it erectus hanging on, or Heidelbergensis being born? Was it an event at 930,000 years ago, or did it stretch earlier, over a million? Science has no final answer yet. What it has is absence. A genomic whisper, a fossil gap, a geological shift. The rest is interpretation, and the arguments are fierce. But in a way, that uncertainty is the point. It reminds us that survival was not inevitable, and neither is understanding. We're piecing together a story from fragments, debating every layer, every tooth, every shard of DNA. What's clear is this. Whether by climate or chance, the human line nearly ended, and the fact that it didn't is the only reason there's anyone left to argue about it. But survival came at a cost, one still written into our blood today. And this cost is written in all of us to this day. For 117,000 years, the human line hovered on the edge of disappearance. Not thousands of tribes, not millions of wanderers. Every death mattered. One unlucky season could have been the end of us. And yet, it wasn't. When the bottleneck finally lifted around 813,000 years ago, populations began to recover. Fire became common. Landscapes softened. Fossils returned to the record. What had been silence slowly filled with traces again. But recovery is not the same as restoration. Genetic diversity had been cut by nearly 99%. Compared to other primates, humans are astonishingly uniform. Two chimpanzees from the same forest can be more genetically different from each other than any two humans on Earth. Even gorillas, with their smaller ranges, carry more diversity than we do. Languages, cultures, entire ways of being that might have existed in those missing centuries were erased. What remained was a thinner line, pared down to a handful of survivors. The 1% that would become everyone. It is easy to mistake survival for destiny. To think that because we are here, we were meant to be here. But extinction is the rule. The mammoths on Wrangell Island survived their mainland crash, only to vanish when mutations overwhelmed them. Countless other species never emerged from far lesser trials. We did, not because we were chosen, but because, against the weight of ice, hunger, and absence, Enough of us clung on, and every human alive today carries that improbable inheritance. Every face is a reminder of the few who endured when almost no one did. The silence nearly became permanent. Instead, it became a beginning.
And that is the strange legacy of the bottleneck. Not triumph, not inevitability, but survival. Fragile, contingent, almost accidental. A hundred millennia balanced on the edge of extinction. And from that edge came us. There's a gap in the story of humanity. For a hundred thousand years, the world nearly forgot us. The fossil record shows almost nothing. The genes in our blood show almost no one. Just a trace, a whisper, a bottleneck so severe it should have been the end. And yet, it wasn't. Other creatures faced smaller trials and vanished. Mammoths, sea cows, species erased by the mathematics of scarcity. But we, somehow, endured one of the harshest filters life has ever imposed on our kind. And this, during a time when we had no mastery, no fire, no cities, and even no stories. Just survival. A handful of families clinging on by the skin of their teeth, while the rest of the world went silent. Every living person today carries their endurance in their DNA. Billions of us, all descended from no more than a village's worth of survivors, holding on through the coldest and driest centuries the earth had offered. The silence could have lasted forever. Instead, it became the seed of everything to come. Art, language, memory, myth. We often tell ourselves that humanity was inevitable, that intelligence, culture, civilization were bound to happen. The truth is stranger. We were not destined. We were just lucky. The apocalypse that left only 1% alive could have erased us at any point during these 117,000 years. And we would be nothing more than just another extinct species in the record. Instead, it left us haunted by the memory of absence, by the weight of survival, by the knowledge that our existence hangs on the thinnest of threads. The long silence is over, but its echo is in us still. So if this journey through deep time shifted how you see our place in the world, don't let it stop here. Like the video if it gave you something to think about. Share it with someone who's ever wondered how fragile survival really is. And subscribe if you want more stories that live between extinction and emergence. Because these echoes matter. They remind us that what we take as destiny was never guaranteed. It was survival bought by chance, over and over again. Until next time, keep listening to the echo.